Hello there. In this question I'm going to do a, an exam question to show you how to interpret graphs. Uh, in this case it's the graph of a quadratic function and you see in this particular quadratic function we have f maps x onto 7x minus x squared. So the coefficient of the x squared term is what determines the shape of the quadratic function. And in this case, the coefficient of the x squared term is minus 1. So that's, that's here because there's a minus in front of the x squared. And that means that the shape of this uh, function will look like a frown. It'll look like that. Now, we're asked to draw the graph of f for the domain from 0 up to 7. So I'm going to do that now. And uh, OK, so I've drawn a table with my inputs. Remember the domain goes from 0 to 7. So my x coordinates go from 0 to 7. And I just substituted those values in for x in the function and I got my outputs which range from 0 up to 12. So my y-axis I can draw as close to the left hand side as I want because all of my x values are positive. And I need to go up as far as 12. So let's call this 12, and that'll be 10, and 8, 6, 4, 2, and 0. Uh, now I'll do my x-axis. And I'll go 1, 2, 3, 0. 0, and 0 is here. 1 and 6 is here, 2 and 10, 3 and 12, whoops, is here, 4 and 12, 5 and 10, 6 and 6, and 7 and 0. Okay, so now I just join these up with one continuous sweeping curve. And there we have it. Now, this question says, the formula for the height, y, of a golf ball above ground level, x seconds after it is hit, is given by 7x minus x squared. So the y-axis here represents the height of the golf ball in meters. So let's say meters. And this is seconds. Use your graph to find the maximum height reached by the ball. OK, um, it seems to me that maximum height is here. So one of these squares represents one unit. So I'm going to say about 12.5. So I'm going to write in here my answer. 12.5 meters is my estimate there for the max. And to estimate the number of seconds the golf ball was more than two meters above the ground. Okay, more than two meters would be here. There's two meters. So when was it more than two meters? At this number of seconds, which is about half a second. So from 0 0.5 seconds to Actually, that's not 0 0.5 because one of these squares represents a half, so it's actually 0 0.25. I'll write it in blue as well. So this number here is 0 0.25, and this number here is about 6.75. So from 0 0.25 to 6.75 seconds, which is a total number of 6.5 seconds. OK, that wasn't too bad. Let's try another example. OK, uh, there's a third question to that. And it says, the graph below represents the flight of another golf ball. The flight of the golf ball is given by the formula ax minus x squared we're asked to find the value of a. Okay, so the function really is 
y equal to ax minus x squared. When x is 0, we get 0. So that doesn't help us. When x is 1, okay, we should get, so let's say f of 1 is a times 1 minus 1, which is a minus 1. But we can see from our graph that when x is 1, f of 1 is 5. So we have that 5 is equal to a minus 1, which means that a is equal to 5 plus 1, which is 6. So we found our answer. We can double check it, perhaps with another one. We could go f of 2 is equal to a times 2 minus 2 squared, which is 4. And f of 2 is, let's see, 8. So we have 8 is equal to 2a minus 4. Bring the 4 over and we get 12. It's 2a. So a must be 12 over 2, which is 6. So either way, we found the value of a. So remember that when we have our output, we can see from our graph our output, when x is 1, the output is 5. So 5 is effectively f of 1. OK, so we have all of these points on the curve. Here's another point up here. f of 3, OK, so f of 3 is 9. We can say here that f of 4 is 8, and so on. So we can read all of this information off the graph. Let's try one more example. Here we have a graph showing two functions. We have a quadratic function, f of x, and we have a linear function, g of x. We're asked to find the value of a and b. Now a and b are down here, and it's actually where the graph of f of x cuts through the x-axis. So in other words, the y-coordinate here is 0. So for what values of x do we get f of x equal to 0? In other words, solve, we basically need to solve f of x equal to 0. And we'll find the value of a and b. Well, f of x is x squared minus 4x plus 3. So this must be 0 for some values of x. What values of x do we sub in to get an output of 0? We just need to solve this quadratic equation. And we can do that by factorizing. We get x and x. And 1 and 3 gives us 3. And we want them both to be minus to give us minus 4x. So we have that x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 3. So a, which is the smaller of those two, is 1 and b, which is the bigger of the two, is 3. Finally, we're asked to find the value of k. g of x is the function x plus k. What do we know about that? Well, we know that it cuts through the point A, which is where x is 1. So when x is 1, g of x is 0. So we have that g of 1 equal to 0, which means that x plus k, sorry, x is now 1. So when we sub 1 in, we get uh, 1 plus k, and that must be 0. So that means that k is equal to minus 1. So just judging from our graph, we have found the values of these unknowns, a and b, where the graph of f of x cuts through the x-axis, and k, which is the constant in the linear function. OK, I hope this has helped. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join us for the next one.